And without objection, the chair is authorized to declare a recess of the committee at any time. This hearing is entitled, Moving the Money, Understanding the Iranian Regime's Access to Money Around the World and How They Use It to Support Terrorism. Without objection, all members will have five legislative days within which to submit extraneous materials to the chair for inclusion in the record. Uh, so I now recognize myself for five minutes to give an opening statement. Mr. Goldberg, Mr. Uh, Nerona, and Mr. Thomas, I want to say thank you for being here. Uh, we appreciate your time. I know for at least two of you, uh, you were uh, also part of a hearing yesterday with my uh, colleague, uh, Blaine Lukemeyer. Uh, so you're pulling to some double duty, and uh, we do appreciate that. And uh, the, at, at the end of the day, we are trying to find out how we can help stabilize the Middle East. That ultimately is the, uh, is the goal here. So let me be clear. Today's hearing should not be labeled as partisan. Members from both sides of the aisle have concerns about how the Iranian regime is able to support terrorism around the world, continue its march towards developing nuclear weapon capabilities, and suppress human rights of its own people. So let's begin today by setting the stage. Since 2021, the Iranian regime has profited nearly $80 billion from oil sales around the world, which is due in part to relaxed sanctions. Earlier this summer, reports indicated that the United States and Iran had resumed diplomatic engagements after the Biden administration failed to uh, revive the Joint Comprehensive Plan, or JCPOA. Uh, in September, the United States and Iran finalized a swap involving the release of five American hostages in exchange for five Iranian nationals who had been charged with sanctions violations and federal crimes while agreeing to give Iran access to approximately $6 billion in funds previously held in South Korea. <clears throat> Similarly, the administration waived sanctions to allow more than $10 billion worth of Iranian assets held in Iraq to be transferred to Oman and other jurisdictions. Three weeks ago, Hamas committed just one of the most brutal uh, terrorist attacks that we have ever seen uh, on the state of Israel, and 30 Americans tragically lost their lives in that. It's important to note that Hamas receives approximately $350 million per year in support from Iran, or roughly 93% of their total funding. Finally, last week, the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee launched an investigation to better understand the administration's decisions regarding economic sanctions on the Iranian regime. So today's hearing will focus around three central questions. First, how restricted Iranian funds are held around the world and how, Iranian regimes, how the Iranian regime accesses them. Uh, second, uh, understanding the genesis of the $6 billion used as negotiating terms to release the hostages in Iran. Where, what is, that, is that, in fact, what happened? And third, how the administration helped the Iranian regime more easily access an additional $10 billion paid by Iraq for electricity. Here's what Congress can do. First, we can push for greater transparency when any administration is choosing to waive sanctions that have been passed by this body, especially as negotiating terms and any hostage deal with the Iranian regime. Members of this body should not be kept in the dark, and consequences are too great. Next, we do not allow uh, sanctions to be waived, rolled back, or funds transferred. Time and time again, Iran has shown that it's willing to starve its own people in pursuit of supporting terrorism or achieving a nuclear weapon. Naively believing that diplomatic agreements will deter Iranian regime, the, the Iranian regime will be done at our own peril. We must cripple their economy and return the previous administration's maximum pressure campaign, in my opinion. Let me close with this. I know there's a lot of different opinions uh, about what is happening in Gaza and, and with the Palestinians and with Israel, but we should all agree that innocent civilians should not be used as political cover. Make no mistake, Hamas is no friend of the Palestinian people, in my opinion, and the Iranian regime is no friend of ours. We must not waver in our support for our ally of Israel. So I look forward to hearing uh, from our witnesses today, and I'm going to yield back the balance of my time, and I now will 